Hey YouTubers, Tim Walling here. If you like our channel, please like the video and subscribe to us. What we're going to look at today is the Smith & Wesson bodyguard here. And this firearm has been cleared already. We'll let you get a quick look at the firearm. The firearm is chambered in 380. The firearm will hold six rounds in it. There's a pinky extension here on the magazine, okay? This doesn't come on it from the factory. And this is a friend of mine's gun. This is actually not my firearm. But I wanted to take a look at it. We're also going to compare it to the DB9 here, okay? But this firearm does have your slide release here. And it does have a rear safety on it, okay? So you do have a thumb safety on this firearm. It is not ambidextrous, so it is not on this side if you are a southpaw then you won't have any controls over here to operate this. But we drop our slide. So the safety. Look at the safety in there, how it's built in. Look how it's built into the frame, nice and smooth. You're not going to accidentally turn that safety on. To actually turn that safety on, you're going to have to reach up in there and give it quite the push. You hear it snap. You can hear it snap in the position, but... To take the safety off, when you go to remove it, your thumb comes down, it pops right off. So they made it where it's a little tougher to put on intentionally, so you don't accidentally turn the safety on if you're using the gun, but you can easily take the safety off, okay? And you see the Smith & Wesson bodyguard. Now this frame came with a laser built into it. It's built right into the frame of the firearm here. And it does have a control on each side. There are two settings on it, a steady beam and then a flashing beam that goes on. But to turn it on while you've got your grip, your finger, your index finger, your trigger finger here is right in the perfect spot to push it. But it is kind of hard to push. So I'm using my support hand and my thumb over here to secure the firearm as I'm putting pressure here. And you can see, um, there we go. I have to put a lot of pressure on it to make it turn on. Now, you go there first. Now, to turn it off, you have to go to the next setting. So there's the next setting where the laser actually flashes on it. After that, you hold it down and you can go to the off setting. So not the easiest laser to actually turn on and off. you got to really put some pressure on it. And attacks happen normally within 20 feet, 1.4 seconds. So I don't think you're going to have opportunity or time to actually get that laser on, to turn it on and make it useful. If you had time and we're going to be prepared, you could turn that laser on and be ready to use it. But turning it off is going to require you to go to the blinking setting and then back to the off setting on the firearm. So I... Uh, I do like the firearm. I like the feel of it in my hand. The sights, the sights are fairly small on it now, but that's what you get on these little small firearms. You can see the little small sights there. And it doesn't come white on the front. The young man that had it before added some white to the front so you so that you could see the front sights a little easier, pick them up a little easier. If you'll notice that my hand there I'm, I really got a one finger grip on this gun. This second finger here is really not even getting a lot of grip on it. But with that extended magwell on it, I'm able to get two fingers, only two fingers on the firearm to hang on to it to actually shoot it. So I'm not real crazy about that. I like that magazine extension and being able to get that third finger on there. But you can shoot guns that way. There's a lot of people that do that and don't have an issue with them. So this firearm, the bodyguard weighs, so the empty weight on the bodyguard is 12 and a half ounces. 12 and a half ounces. Let's put a magazine. This holds six rounds. So let's put six rounds in the firearm. Let's weigh it with six rounds in it. We are 14 and a half ounces. 14 and a half ounces loaded weight on the bodyguard here okay we'll take that ammo back out we'll safety check the chamber again 
fire it. Um, okay, trigger pull. So I checked the trigger pull on this firearm and the trigger pull on it is right at eight pounds. It was coming in just at eight pounds to fire. What I do like about this bodyguard is it is a true double action firearm. So you've got a small hammer right up inside here. You see the hammer there? See it come back? There it is. Fires. If you have a misfire, you can pull the trigger again and fire one more time with it. So that is a nice feature on this gun. Trigger pull though, eight pounds. That's a little bit heavy for me. So let's take a quick look here at the diamond back. Now this diamond back is actually mine at my personal choice is a sample of one. I prefer the nine millimeter over the 380. You can see we got the two rounds here. Not a lot of difference in the nine millimeter versus the 380. Neither one of these guns will shoot plus P. So this gun's pushing, this 380 is pushing about 950 lineal feet per second. We're pushing about 1150 lineal feet per second with this nine millimeter here, okay? So this nine millimeter also holds six rounds in it. And as you can see, when I grab it, my pinky is still not on the firearm. You can get a magazine extension that will come down and give you that extra grip on the gun. Now, this firearm does have front cocking serrations on it, so you can grab it here. The bodyguard does not have the front cocking serrations. It only has the rear cocking serrations on it. I do like the OD green on this DB9 and the sights on the DB9. They're three dot. They're fairly small, but you can pick them up. They do the job on this firearm. So the weight, the unloaded weight on the DB9 is 13 ounces, 13 ounces. So let's put a loaded magazine in here, six rounds. Let's see what the weight is now. We are 15 and a half ounces, 15 and a half ounces. So we are, let's check that chamber one more time. It is clear. So you can get a laser for the front of this DB9 also to put one on if you would like. And the lasers run about $100 for this gun. So this gun usually sells around 210, 220, right in there somewhere. So you're looking at $100 for the laser, about $310, $320 if you added the laser on it. This bodyguard, I've seen a lot of different prices on this bodyguard. I've seen this thing online going from anywhere from around $325 up to around $450. That does include your laser. So basically, this comes with the laser if you can find it for around the $330, $340 mark. The DB9, after you add the laser, still a little bit cheaper than the the uh, Smith & Wesson gun there. But that's all going to be personal preference for you. Whether you want to go with a 380 or move up with a, DB, with a 9mm. So, let's compare these two guns together. Now, the reason I chose to compare these is they're almost exactly the same size. They're one ounce heavier. The 9mm is one ounce heavier. But the size difference in it the grips are basically the same length here at the bottom. The barrel and the slide is less than a half inch longer on the front of the firearm here. So once we put it in the holster, these are pocket guns now. So here we've got a holster to slide it in. You drop it in the holster, put it in your pocket, you reach in, pull the gun out, and it's ready to go. This is not something you're necessarily going to take to the range and shoot a lot on a daily basis. This is something you're going to drop in your pocket so that you have with you in an emergency. And this DB9 fits into the same pocket holster. They share the same pocket holsters there. This is the actual pocket holster that I carry it in. What I like about it is it has this piece onto the holster here. So I can reach in my pocket and get my firing grip and pull the firearm out. And this piece right here catches on the back of your pants 
so that the holster stays in your pants as the firearm actually or stays in your pocket as the firearm actually comes out got a holster outside the waistband kydex holster leather on the back of it here it's just a holster that i made i made it for the db9 so that i could drop it on my side very small package very lightweight right at one pound just under one pound while loaded so easy to conceal easy to hide uh, works great in this holster this kydex style holster here comparing these two firearms here my personal preference when comparing these two firearms i prefer the db9 9 millimeter myself over the 380 acp i do like having a laser on a firearm i am not crazy about these push button lasers uh, i prefer a laser such as this where it's a clamshell and it comes all the way down and here's the activation button under here so that when you get your grip, your metal finger right here turns that laser on just by tightening up your grip on the firearm. So I always go for the lasers that have the access button here versus ones you have to push on the top. So let's go to the range and let's shoot these two firearms, okay? And then we'll come back and do final thoughts on them. Okay guys, we're out here with the Bodyguard 380. Let's take some shots with it and see how it does. So let's shoot from retention this time and see how we do on that. So I really like this bodyguard. I like the way it fires. Easy to control, easy to hang on to. Actually fires very accurate at this distance and that speed. No malfunctions, no hangups with it at all. It's a nice gun. All right guys, so now we got our diamond back out in nine millimeter. So let's run this diamond back a little bit and see how it runs. Always go around in the chamber before you begin. So let's just do a mag dump on it one time here.
Well, I'll have to admit I'm definitely more accurate with the 9mm than I am that 380 is shooting that fast. I'm almost all in the center of the red of the target there. And the three that aren't are just below it. So let's do one from retention one time. I do like this DB9 also. This is a good shooting firearm. I've never had any issues, stoppages, or malfunctions with this firearm. Um, but I guess you just have to choose what you're going to do with the firearm to determine which one is going to be the right gun for you to choose. Okay, we're back from the range. And both guns ran really well. We didn't have any stoppages, any malfunctions in either gun. And we were running the guns fairly fast while we were out there. We put a good bit of ammunition through both of them. The thing I like best about the DB9 is, of course, the front cocking serrations. I have a preference for those myself. And it being 9mm, I really like the trigger in the firearm. Trigger is nice and smooth in this gun. You pull it, it just comes back, and then it just breaks. It's got a good, clean really crisp break in it when you're pulling the trigger. I do like that. I do like the three dot sights on this firearm also. Uh, one of the things I don't like about this firearm is it will not slide lock open. There's no slide lock on the firearm. Now, the Smith & Wesson firearm. I do like that it has the thumb safety on it right here. And I like that it's a little difficult to put on. That means you're not going to knock it on by accident. But what I do like also about it is when you want it off, you just reach up with your thumb and pull it. It comes right off nice and easy. Not crazy about the trigger myself. The trigger is just kind of spongy. It's just soft as it goes back. It, I would like for it just to be a little shorter and a little more crisper when it actually does break. But one of the things I do like about this firearm is it's double action. You pull the trigger and you have a misfire. You can pull the trigger again and that hammer is going to hit the primer one more time before you actually have to eject the round out of the firearm. does come with a laser already built into the gun. So if you're looking for a laser, you do have that already on the firearm. Now you can add it to the DB9 if you wanted to. But it's really going to come down to personal opinion and what you're looking for in the firearm. If you want the safety or no safety, I think it's a little nicer trigger in the, in the diamond back. The Smith & Wesson, the double action in it, you pull the hammer, it's popping the primer two times if you need it to to try to get that round to go off. So... Both guns are good guns, good quality guns, seem to be well-made guns. Both guns run really well. Uh, both guns have the same amount of ammo in them, and both guns are within an ounce of being the same weight. Remember, guys, be a responsible adult. Buy a gun lock, gun safe, secure your firearm, keep it out of the hands of children. Don't push your responsibility as an adult off onto a child. Be safe, everybody.